Welcome to your second video in building ZK apps. This video, we're gonna talk about how you can generate a ZK app and deploy it to the MENA network. If you're just jumping in, I encourage you to check out the first video. That's going to get you all the essential tools you need for this video, as well as a basic understanding of zero knowledge proofs. As a reminder, you can install the ZK app CLI with this command here. One of the commands within ZK is project. And this will allow us to create a new project. Let's go ahead and just call it learning. When you do this, it'll ask you some follow-up questions. For this example, we are going to go with none. Once this is finished, you will have a new directory named after the name of your project, in our case, learning. So go ahead and open this folder in your editor. The ZK project command gives you a project so you can easily see how a ZK app is built and how to deploy it to the MENA network. It'll take us some time to break down all of the code, so we're going to go in sections. What we'll first do in this video is give an overview of the important files and then how to take those files and turn it into a deployed project. So we won't be modifying too much in this video video, but it's important to know this source folder is where our actual TypeScript code is located. The first important file is this add.ts file, which is the default smart contract that is generated. You can scroll through here and see what it does if you understand the basics of TypeScript. Now you don't have to be a TypeScript expert to follow this series, but some would be helpful. I will try to explain things as they come up, but we're not going to cover what all of this is doing right now. The main things though that you should understand is we're creating a smart contract called add initializing it with some value, in this case one, and then we have a method to update that value by adding two to that value. And this just describes the different interactions we can do with our code. There's not a whole lot we can do, we can just update that value and increase it. So again, add.ts is the smart contract. The next thing you should know is interact.ts. This is a sample script showing how to interact with that smart contract. And this is essentially where you will generate your zero knowledge proofs. I went through that kind of fast, but you can see in here this tx.prove. This is going to create a zero knowledge proof. So if we took the code as is and deployed it, what would we have? We would have a deployed smart contract, which in this case would just be a verifier that verifies our zero knowledge proofs. We would also have local code to generate the zero knowledge proofs. So there's always two parts to a zero knowledge proof, the prover and the verifier. And we're going to talk about that more here. What we're going to do is we're going to show how to deploy this and then we can create a zero knowledge proof and send it to our verifier. So to do this from the terminal, we can use the ZK command and we're going to say ZK config this will allow us to set up a network that we can send our transactions to. So for a name, we could say something like testnet, and then we're going to take an API URL to interact with this testnet. Now, just so everybody's on the same page, when we say testnet, we're referring to a test environment. This is going to be a deployed blockchain, but it's not used for any real world applications. This is just for developing and testing your applications. Now the name of the test network and the URL to use could change as the network continues to develop, but this is the URL we are going to use. And then the fee, go ahead and say 0.1. Now we are building zero knowledge proofs in the context of a blockchain. So we're going to be using a cryptocurrency, in this case, Mina. All the zero knowledge proof concepts and code can still make sense outside of the context of blockchain, but this is the easiest way to verify zero knowledge proofs in a decentralized way. And is going to be the most common way to work with Mina's zero knowledge proof system. So what this is down here is a link to a faucet. And this is basically a way to get some test Mina. So go ahead and open this URL. This will automatically have your MENA address. Go ahead and hit request, and it'll give you a link to an explorer which will show you that transaction. Now, when you start, this is going to be labeled as pending. It can take some time for this transaction to be verified. According to the faucet, about three minutes, but this can vary based on the activity of the testnet. Taking a closer look at this transaction, it has a transaction hash. This is how you can uniquely identify your transaction. It has an amount of the test Mina coin, which we're going to use for transactions. And the other thing that is important here is the two, this is your address. So it's good to just remember what this ends in, in this case, TH6X. So once the transaction is confirmed, the page will change to something like this. We have some extra information and it no longer says pending. At this point, we should be able to go to our terminal and say ZK deploy. And then the name of the config we just created, which I called it testnet. And actually we're running into an issue where we're running an older version of the ZK app CLI. So we can just update that real quick, dash G for global and then ZK app CLI. 
we're using the global flag because we're now within a project and we want to make sure we are installing this globally across the system. So we should be able to say ZK system again, get that response. And now we should see the updated ZK app CLI as well as a specific version here since we're within a project. Now, what we can do is say ZK deploy. It's going to go through that deployment process. Go ahead and select the testnet. Once it is ready, you can confirm and it says success deploy transaction sent. This deployment is another transaction. So you can go ahead and open this in the browser as well. And here we have a pending ZK app transaction. We're going to wait for this transaction to be confirmed. And here we have the confirmed transaction. And here we have that same address ending in TH6X. You can click this. And this is actually your smart contract. Scrolling down, we have a verification key hash. Let's talk about this for a moment. The verification key is how you identify an account to be a ZK app. The verifier needs to have a verification key. In our scenario, this account deployed on the network is the verifier. So it's always going to have that verification key. This is used in verifying zero knowledge proofs. So this is pretty much what we have been working to create. We created a verifier and it's going to be using that verification key to say true or false on whether some computation was done correctly. That's what was the focus of this video. In the next one, we're going to be talking about the other side of this, which is the prover. This is a similar illustration for a prover, which is basically going to take some inputs and produce a zero knowledge proof. And that's going to be done in our interact script. So taking a look back at our code, as we mentioned here, we haven't talked about the interact script in this video. That's what we're going to do in the next video. So we're basically just building that full setup. We have the verifier ready to go. And now we need to learn how we can create proofs and send them to the verifier. So in this scenario, we're going to be the prover locally on our own computer and then we're going to send our proofs to a verifier, which is external to our computer on a blockchain network. This can be complex, so don't feel bad if you don't understand it right away. It's taken me some time to wrap my brain around these different pieces as well. But before we go into the next video, let's do a quick review. We generated a sample application which has our smart contract code and a script to interact with our smart contract code. The sample smart contract code all it does is initialize some data to one and give us a method to increase that value. Next up, we use ZK config, which generated us a key pair. That's how we got our address that we can use to publicly identify our deployed verifier. And then we received Mina to this address through the faucet, which allowed us to pay network fees. Once we had that config set up, we then said ZK deploy, which took our smart contract code creating a verification key from it. And that is what was sent to the network to be our public verifier. This can then later be used to check if we are running computation correctly. And we'll see that soon. Thanks again so much for watching. Again, be sure to use the link to watch through the playlist if you just want to easily follow through this series. Hopefully this was helpful in giving you a better understanding and I'll see you in the next video.